Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. It's Bertrude and today we're using my ultimate wind build. This is a really fun build. It's got a few different weapons and it makes use of all of the wind ashes of war. Starting off, we'll take a look at the stats. We're a level 50 build. We've got 38 vigor, 36 strength and 18 dex. Pretty simple stuff. In the flask, we're using the opaline hard tier for the damage negation and the strength knot for a little bit more damage on our weapons. And then finally, here's a quick look at the armour and talismans that we're using on the build. As I said, we've got a few different weapons on the build, the first one being the Lance, and that's equipped with the Stormcaller. As well as this, we've also got the Banished Knight's Halberd, and that's got Storm Assault on it. We've also got the Zweihander, and that's got the good old Storm Stomp on it. And then finally we've got the Grey Epi and that's got Vacuum Slice attached on it. We've also got a shield on this build and that's got Stormwall Parry. And that's the build guys, this is a really really fun build, I think you're going to like the invasions. Don't forget to like and subscribe, but it's time for you lot to sit back, relax and enjoy. Okay guys, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all having an absolutely awesome day. Let's start things off by talking about the lore behind this build. Now this build isn't really one of my own ideas if you like. I got the inspiration for this build from one of my, well not one of my, my all time favourite book. It's a fantasy book and it's by a, an author called Patrick Rothfuss and the name of the book is called The Name of the Wind and it's part of the King Killer Chronicles. If you've never heard of that book, The Name of the Wind, I highly, highly recommend it, especially if you're into your fantasy books, fantasy stories, anything fantasy based, you are going to absolutely love it. But anyway, The Name of the Wind. In that book, the main character is called Quoth and Quoth sets out to learn the true name of the wind. There's a lot more to it than that, a lot more things happen along the way but they all all in all his main target is to learn the name of the wind if you know the true name of something that means that you can control it and use it to your own devices there's a really famous bit in the book where um, someone's telling him the story of someone who managed to learn the name of the wind and to test the theory this person jumps out of a window of a really high building but instead of falling to the ground and obviously going splat he actually uses the wind and he calls the wind to catch him on the way down and the wind you know brings him down nice to a, to a nice gentle landing and that is a kind of whole theme throughout the story so this character just like quoted in the book this character in Elden Ring has gone out and he's took a long time over it but he's actually managed to learn the name of the wind and he can now use it and bend it to his will and in doing so is infused it into all of his weapons that he's using in the form of the ashes of war really really powerful ashes of war the storm assault the um, vacuum slice the uh, storm caller really good ashes of war but all wind based obviously that's quite a simple idea for a build just putting all the wind ashes of war onto one character but it was the book that kind of inspired me to do it, if you know what I mean. It weren't as simple as just putting all the storm ashes of war together. Like I said, it was really the book that inspired me. Awesome book, and it's turned into a really, really, really fun build. Something I do want to say about the build, guys. Obviously, Vacuum Slice is on the Great Epi Thrusting Sword. And the replacement for that, the more obvious replacement for Vacuum Slice, would have been Stormblade. That obviously fits into the theme with the other Ashes of War better. But to be honest, I just really like Vacuum Slice as an Ash of War. I just really like it. I think it's different. You don't see it too much. You, see, you do see Storm Assault a lot. And I could have easily used it on this build and it would have been fine. Do you know, it would have been absolutely fine. But like I say, I just wanted to use something a little bit different on that for that particular Ash of War on that particular weapon. I do like Vacuum Slice and I think it still fits the build um, reasonably well. I still consider it a wind based Ash of War. It looks like it's you know a projectile wind attack. So I think it fits absolutely fine but you know I just want to clear that up. Obviously Stormblade would have been the more fitting choice but Vacuum Slice I'm just as happy with it. And like I say I just really like it. It's a really fun Ash of War.
Another little fact about this build as well, in terms of the weapons that we're using, the Swihander, the Lance, uh, the Banished Knight's Halberd, these were weapons that I put off using for a long, long time. And the reason I did that is because, if you know my channel, you know my builds, I consider myself quite a bit of a, <laughs> I don't know, maybe like a bit of a hipster when it comes to Elden Ring builds, Eld, you know, the, the particular weapons I choose to use. I tend to stay away from weapons that you maybe see a lot of or, you know, were typ typically dual based weapons, just like kind of meta weapons that you see all the time. And I'm not saying the Lance and the Zweihand are particularly meta, maybe like double Lance, yeah, you know, you're heading into the real meta territory there, but a single Lance, obviously not too meta. But I just thought at the time that you were seeing a lot of these particular weapons, like if someone was using a colossal greatsword, it would more than likely be the, the Zweihander or the, the Gut Sword. You know, you see the this particular halberd, you see this halberd a lot. Um, and the lance, you know, like I say, you see double lances all the time, so you do see a lot of the lance. And for a long time, I put off using these weapons. I steered clear of them, I, I steered clear of them. I was a bit, um, you know, I was a bit up myself about them. I was a bit, you know, and that was wrong. That was totally wrong. As soon as I started actually using these weapons, I found out how fun these ones actually are. And I couldn't believe that I'd put off using the Zweihander for so long, and I'd put off using the Lance for so long. The single Lance moveset is one of the most fun weapons I think I've used. You know, and I've used pretty much all of them at this point. I think the moveset on the single Lance is top tier. It's just a lot of fun. And uh, the Zweihander as well, you know, it's got those big charged porking R2s. Just a real fun weapon. If you, if you put Storm Stomp on that, which is a particularly um, popular Ash of War, it's very strong, but you put it on the Zweihander and it's given it another string to its bow that it can use to attack people. It's got the heavy thrusting uh, R2, it's got some nice sweeping R1s. Uh, Storm Stomp opens them up for some easy attacks, and it's, you know, they're just fun weapons. Same with the Great Epi to an extent as well. I always steered clear of Great um, Thrusting Swords because I thought it was a bit cheesy and, you know, I didn't like it when I had to fight one. But as soon as I put it on this build and started using it, I found out that it was a lot of fun. So making this build back when I made it did teach me a lot of lessons in Elden Ring. And that is not to be a snob, <laughs> basically. Don't be a snob about what weapons you choose. Even for someone like me who likes to make quirky builds, likes to make builds that are a bit different, you know, not kind of typical Elden Ring builds. Even someone like me can still use weapons that I've been putting off and still find that will do a lot of fun and that applies to a lot of weapons as well I actually made a build with Rivers of Blood um, a samurai build and I found that the Rivers of Blood was a lot of fun once I started using it you know you just got to stop being such a snob about certain weapons now if we go to Moonvale territory that is a weapon I will never use so let's not get too carried away but Rivers of Blood I made a build and it was a lot of fun so yeah still learning guys even two years later still learning that you know weapons are fun a lot of weapon classes are fun if you've never considered them just make a build stick it on a build give it a go and you'll probably find out like i have that you've you've been uh, missing out for a long time you've probably noticed as well on this build guys that we've been going for quite a lot of parries with the storm wall parry again i think it just fits the build so so well the fact that there's a wind based parry on this particular build just fits perfectly and you know it's it's just so satisfying. It is so satisfying getting a parry with the Storm parry option. It's always fun getting parries, whether you're using the Golden parry or the uh, Carry and Retaliation parry. When you're using one of the parries, that gives you a smaller parry window. And I'm pretty sure the Storm parry is a smaller window than like Carry and Retaliation. I might be wrong on that, but I'm pretty sure it's a smaller window. If you're using that or you're using one of like the standard parries with a weapon, it's so much more satisfying to pull those parries off. This particular invasion in the background here, this host was doing a really good job, um, you know, putting up a good fight, but he was absolutely determined to parry me with this Y-hander. <laughs> and, you know, I felt for the guy in the end. I gave him a little bit of stick here at the end, you know, giving him a few parries of my own. But he put up a good fight, and I actually messaged him after. I thought, if he doesn't know that you can't parry this Y-hander, I'd best let him know. <laughs> so I sent him a little message. I just said, you can't parry Colossal Swords, bro. And he's put, you know, he's new to this. And, you know, it's just nice to be nice sometimes. I just let him know, you can't parry Colossal Swords. Always good to remember that. And, you know, 
give him a bit of encouragement. He's only just started, but that's what we want. We want new players coming to the game. I'm hoping when the DLC comes out, there's going to be an influx of new players just like him. And even though in invasions, it might be a bit simple sometimes, it might be a bit easy fighting these new players, just try and be nice to him, innit? Let's try and give him a, a positive... Um, <laughs> a positive start we want them to stay around we want the game to be healthy we want the invasions to be active and I think that's how you do it just be nice to people you know there's enough there's enough torment between invaders and horse so on occasions when you can be nice I think it's always nice to just be nice in it <laughs> without sounding too soppy I think that's a good idea this was another good invasion down in this cave nice 3v1 the horse there coming at us with the talons and the jumping cloak and he's causing us a bit of blood build up. We've got to watch out for him, he's been a bit dangerous but we took out the first summon in this one easy enough. The second summon here is trying to do a lot of blocking with his sword which isn't necessarily the best idea. As you can see we do manage to break his guard and get the riposte there, the critical attack. Broke his guard a few times throughout that invasion so I knew it was only a matter of time. Never the best idea to block with your sword if you've not got a lot of endurance it's easy to get guard broken but it's good effort now it's just a case of keeping a bit of pressure on the host and this one will be done and dusted soon enough and we get a nice jumping attack there a nice jumping plunging attack to get the kill on the host really good invasion and a really nice way to end the invasion as well. You probably also noticed that we've got the fire greases on this build. That's because all our weapons on this one are heavy infused, which means that we can give them a little nice buff with the fire grease, just for a little bit more damage. And also a little bit of flare as well. It looks really cool when you're running around with a flaming weapon. Looks really cool. You can see Storm Stormcaller there. So good when you're being pushed. It can hit numerous people at the same time. Really, really strong Ash of War. And again, you know, with the with the um, fire infused sword there, with the grease, you're getting a lot more damage. You've got a flaming sword swinging around your head. It just looks absolutely awesome. Really, really good stuff. This trio was quite hard to deal with. You know, they was coming at me with a lot of bleed build up. But put a bit of pressure on one of them, and he's soon going to fall down that big elevator shaft. He doesn't know it's coming, but it's coming. <laughs> it's truly coming. Now we just have to put a bit of pressure on him and he's panicking, look at him, he's panicking and just as I said, down the elevator shaft you go. <laughs> so that's one summon down in this one. We've still got the other summon though, spamming that Redubia Ash of War at us, so we've got to watch out for that, you know. Bleed build up, can be deadly, got to watch out. But watch this, a nice little swap to the Storm Assault Halberd and that's a second summon down. Really nice little tactic on this build that I like to do. I'm definitely not the best hard swapper in the world, I've said this before on numerous occasions. I am the world's worst hard swapper, there's no doubt about it. I am not good when it comes to hard swapping, but I've got a few different builds that do try to utilise hard swaps. Even though I'm not very good, some builds I do, do try to incorporate that playstyle, just because it's good to keep our opponents on the toes. And just like that invasion, you can catch him off guard by switching to a weapon that's got a good Ash of War on it, like Storm Assault is. And it can often be the difference between winning and losing an invasion. This invasion here was quite a, <laughs> quite a peculiar one. The host, I'm not sure where he is during this invasion, I never actually see him. I think he's just kind of hiding in the corner. Let any summon deal with me, you know, with someone using those big two bonk weapon hammers. Is that the jumping cloak? I'm not sure if it is or not. Um, it might be blades armor, that actually. I, it might be blades armor. I don't think that's a jumping cloak. But either way, he's got those two big, massive bonk sticks, those two big hammers. And his summon is nowhere to be seen. He's just trying to let his summon... Uh, sorry, his host, sorry, is nowhere to be seen. The host is just trying to let his summon tech curve of the nasty red man while he sits back so it's just turned into a bit of a battle between me and the summon i did feel like i had him in my pocket for most of this fight it was quite easy to read with his attacks he was just looking for some you know quite a few jumping attacks with his big bonk sticks it was quite obvious when he was going for um you know his single attacks or crouching attacks with them i managed to get a nice parry early on 
but he's got a lot of health as well this guy so it's just kind of I've got to play the slow game with him I can't afford to get hit because those weapons are going to do a lot of damage it's just a case of whittling him down slowly it turns into a little bit of a war but it's a really good fight it's a really good fight regardless even though I don't see the host I don't care really I just stopped, I stopped caring about the host in this invasion a long time ago <laughs> I just really wanted to kill this summon I did decide to swap to the Zweihander halfway through this fight. I made a good start with the Great Epi, with the Vacuum Slice. I got some good hits, some good damage early on. But the longer the fight went on, uh, you know, I just I knew that I couldn't get hit by the summon. And I just felt that I needed a weapon with a touch more impact. And the Storm Salt I should war, with the Storm Stomp I should war, ended up coming in quite handy in this invasion. I just felt that I needed something with a bit more oomph. Um, and uh, it was a good swap. It was a good swap to the Zweihander. I did feel that it helps me um, come out victorious against this summon. Nice little backstab there. As, as I said, you know, he's a little bit too um, obvious with his attacks. I think I've got him quite scared at this point. He's clearly run out of heals now. It's just a case of finding the opening to attack. And there we go, we get the kill. Now, for some reason, I thought the horse was just hiding behind this pillar at the time, but he's obviously down by the fog wall, and as soon as this summon dies, he doesn't want to fight himself, he goes into the boss fight. Shocking behaviour. Just come and fight me, dude. Just come and fight me. You're not going to lose anything, are you? Just come and have a fight. Either way, it was a good invasion. This is a funny one. <laughs> I see this guy, and he just sets off running. We was running for a long, long time. I just call me Forrest Gump. I was just running for the longest of times, and then I finally caught up to this guy. Get one little attack him on him, attacking. I finally catch him, and then it's just a nice little parry for you know for a quick invasion. Here we go. There you go, nice little parry. Just a hell of a long run for a short fight. <laughs> like that was a really, really, really long run for him just to get parried and killed in a matter of seconds. Again, just turn around and fight me. Don't run all that way. <laughs> just save yourself a bit of time, mate. Just turn around and have the scrap. Just have the scrap. Come on. This is another good invasion. This one was another one that I went on for quite a while, actually. Um, I think this might even be the last invasion of the video. But I weren't too... <coughs> I weren't too happy about the start to this one, knowing that we're in water. Because um, I'm obviously using the fire grease buffs on my weapons. We nearly kill the summon there. A smidge of health left. I just couldn't get up quick enough to, to uh, finish him off. But yeah, we've started this fight in the water. I'm trying to apply the fire greases. So obviously I'm at a bit of a disadvantage straight away. But again, you know, it's just a case of keeping the pressure on and trying to find those openings. Regardless if we're in water, the fire buff's still going to give me a bit more damage than if I weren't using it. So it is what it is. But this is the last invasion guys, I'm going to let this one play out, it's got quite a clutch ending to this one, good invasion and it turns out to be a good finish as well. But enjoy it guys, enjoy the last invasion of the video, look after yourselves, look after each other, I hope you've enjoyed watching. Take care and I'll see you all next time.